verses 30 to 31. The dying word wherewith he breathed out his soul, v. 30 when he had received the vinegar, as much of it as he thought fit, he said, it is finished, and, with that, bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. Observe. What he said, and we may suppose him to say it with triumph and exultation, t. Telestai it is finished, a comprehensive word, and a comfortable one. It is finished, that is, the malice and enmity of his persecutors had now done their worst, when he had received that last indignity in the vinegar they gave him, he said, this is the last, I am now going out of their reach, where the wicked cease from troubling. It is finished, that is, the counsel and commandment of his father concerning his sufferings were now fulfilled, it was a determinate counsel, and he took care to see every iota and tittle of it exactly answered, Acts 2.23. He had said, when he entered upon his sufferings, Father, thy will be done, and now he saith with pleasure, it is done. It was his meat and drink to finish his work, ch. 434, and the meat and drink refreshed him, when they gave him gall and vinegar. It is finished, that is, all the types and prophecies of the Old Testament, which pointed at the sufferings of the Messiah, were accomplished and answered. He speaks as if, now that they had given him the vinegar, he could not bethink himself of any word in the Old Testament that was to be fulfilled between him and his death but it had its accomplishment, such as, his being sold for thirty pieces of silver, his hands and feet being pierced, his garments divided, etc., and now that this is done, it is finished. It is finished, that is, the ceremonial law is abolished, and a period put to the obligation of it. The substance is now come, and all the shadows are done away. Just now the veil is rent, the wall of partition is taken down, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, F2 14, 15. The mosaic economy is dissolved, to make way for a better hope. It is finished, that is, sin is finished, and an end made of transgression, by the bringing in of an everlasting righteousness. It seems to refer to Dan 9.24. The Lamb of God was sacrificed to take away the sin of the world, and it is done, Hebrew 9.26. It is finished, that is, his sufferings were now finished, both those of his soul and those of his body. The storm is over, the worst is past all his pains and agonies are at an end, and he is just going to paradise, entering upon the joy set before him. Let all that suffer for Christ, and with Christ, comfort themselves with this, that yet a little while and they also shall say, it is finished. It is finished, that is, his life was now finished, he was just ready to breathe his last, and now he is no more in this world, ch. 1711. This is like that of blessed Paul, 2 Tim 4 colon 7, I have finished my course, my race is run, my glass is out, many, many numbered and finished. This we must all come to shortly. It is finished, that is, the work of man's redemption and salvation is now completed, at least the hardest part of the undertaking is over, a full satisfaction is made to the justice of God, a fatal blow given to the power of Satan, a fountain of grace opened that shall ever flow a foundation of peace and happiness laid that shall never fail. Christ had now gone through with his work, and finished it, ch. 17 colon 4. For, as for God, his work is perfect, when I begin, saith he, I will also make an end. And, as in the purchase, so in the application of the redemption, he that has begun a good work will perform it, the mystery of God shall be finished. What he did, he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. He was voluntary in dying, for he was not only the sacrifice, but the priest and the offerer, and the animus offerentus the mind of the offerer, was all in all in the sacrifice. Christ showed his will in his sufferings, by which will we are sanctified. He gave up the ghost. His life was not forcibly extorted from him, but freely resigned. He had said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit, thereby expressing the intention of this act. I give up myself as a ransom for many, and, accordingly, he did give up his spirit, paid down the price of pardon and life at his father's hands. Father, glorify thy name. 
he bowed his head. Those that were crucified, in dying stretched up their heads to gasp for breath, and did not drop their heads till they had breathed their last, but Christ, to show himself active in dying, bowed his head first, composing himself, as it were, to fall asleep. God had laid upon him the iniquity of us all, putting it upon the head of this great sacrifice, and some think that by this bowing of his head he would intimate his sense of the weight upon him. CPS 38,4, 40,12 The bowing of his head shows his submission to his father's will, and his obedience to death. He accommodated himself to his dying work, as Jacob, who gathered up his feet into the bed, and then yielded up the ghost. Observe the superstition of the Jews, which occasioned it, v31 because it was the preparation for the Sabbath, and that Sabbath day, because it fell in the Passover week, was a high day, that they might show a veneration for the Sabbath, they would not have the dead bodies to remain on the crosses on the Sabbath day, but besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, which would be a certain, but cruel dispatch, and that then they might be buried out of sight. Note here. The esteem they would be thought to have for the approaching Sabbath, because it was one of the days of unleavened bread, and, some reckon, the day of the offering of the first fruits. Every Sabbath day is a holy day, and a good day, but this was a high day, Megal Himera a great day. Passover Sabbaths are high days, sacrament days, supper days, communion days are high days, and there ought to be more than ordinary preparation for them, that these may be high days indeed to us, as the days of heaven. The reproach which they reckoned it would be to that day if the dead bodies should be left hanging on the crosses. Dead bodies were not to be left at any time, do 21-23, yet, in this case, the Jews would have left the Roman custom to take place, had it not been an extraordinary day, and, many strangers from all parts being then at Jerusalem, it would have been an offense to them, nor could they well bear the sight of Christ's crucified body, for, unless their consciences were quite seared, when the heat of their rage was a little over, they would upbraid them. Their petition to Pilate, that their bodies, now as good as dead, might be dispatched, not by strangling or beheading them, which would have been a compassionate hastening of them out of their misery, like the coup de grace, as the French call it, to those that are broken upon the wheel, the stroke of mercy, but by the breaking of their legs, which would carry them off in the most exquisite pain. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. The pretended sanctity of hypocrites is abominable. These Jews would be thought to bear a great regard for the Sabbath, and yet had not regard to justice and righteousness, they made no conscience of bringing an innocent and excellent person to the cross, and yet scrupled letting a dead body hang upon the cross.